Welcome back, my quiver of capitalists, to AP Economics, presented by Cobranomics, your all-American American history teacher, the gold standard of economics, and the sensei of supply side, Professor G here. And you just watched The Law of Supply, Part 1, about the changes to quantity supplied and why the supply curve is shaped the way it is. For Part 2 of today's lesson, we are going to take a look at the law of supply, specifically what the definition is called the changes in supply, that there is no price change. These are due to changes in other than price. Something other than price is going to change, and that is going to affect the ability and willingness of producers to create products and to supply them from the factory market into the product market. Not due to a change in price from the product market, but due to something happening in the factory market regardless of current price of the product. So, our acronym for our acronym for today is ROTTEN. And each of these each of these words has something to do with changing the ability and willingness of businesses to supply their products. A positive change in ability and willingness to supply will increase the supply curve and will shift it to the right. A negative effect on the ability and willingness will decrease the supply curve and shift it to the left. And we're going to take a look at those after. So first, resources. And as we go through this list, I want you to think about, and especially in terms of multiple choice question, that, and this is where it becomes a little difficult for multiple choice, you, they're going to give you a, the test is going to give you a scenario. And in that scenario, it's only going to be supply or demand. If it's one scenario, it's one curve. So you have to think about, who is it affecting? Is it affecting the consumer's ability and willingness to spend? Or is it affecting the supplier's ability and willingness to produce? Our acronym RODIN are only things that affect supply. First, resources. The availability of resources and the cost of those resources. And that could include uh, land, it could, could include rent, it could include wages, so the cost of the resources and the availability of the resources. O is the trickiest one, and R really is the one that appears the uh, most, because R, along with um, technology, taxes and regulation, the R, T, and the second T all have to do with input costs and the availability and cost of the resources. And that's the biggest tell that it is a supply question. O is other industry products. It's confusing. Uh, honestly, doesn't appear too much on the AP test, if at all. And other industry products means like if a business notices that more monitors, or let's say more televisions, or let's say Xbox notices that more televisions are selling are selling in the industry. So what Microsoft Xbox might do is say, oh, people are buying televisions, let's increase production of our Xbox systems to go with those televisions. So it's like the complement businesses notice that the complementary product in the industry is selling and therefore they'll produce more of them. Technology, does the technology improve which to, to create the product. So we're talking about technology. Remember, basically capital, uh, the capital resources, is the efficiency and the quality and quantity of technology improving to create those resources, to, to create those products. So, so capital resources, are they improving the technology? Taxes and regulations. Does the government make an environment that is pro-business, or does it make an environment that is hard to conduct business, either through taxes or regulations? For those of you that live in the five boroughs, 
Uh, very recently, unfortunately, Amazon chose not to set up shop in Queens because it felt that the political climate wasn't conducive to creating a business there. And therefore said, nope, they said, nope, we're going to look somewhere else to build a new hub. So that is a negative effect of regulations. Expectations of prices, I put a little footnote here. Uh, this is probably the most confusing one, and it does, unlike the O, uh, it does appear. Remember, for a business, price is profit. So if businesses expect prices to change in the future, they are therefore expecting profit to change in the future and will adjust their current production accordingly. So if the businesses expect that the expectation of prices increase, that means the current price of the product is the same, but the expectation of the price increase in, increasing uh, happens, so businesses expect prices to increase in the future, businesses will actually decrease supply now. They will hold back production and wait for those prices to increase. If businesses expect prices to decrease in the future, that means businesses expect profits to be worse in the future. So what businesses will do is they will start producing more now while price is still high enough to increase their, to make their break even and have a good profit. So be careful. Uh, remember that the price of the product it currently is the same, but businesses expect future prices to change. And remember, price is profit. So now let's take a look at how does the supply curve react to these events changing. And instead of, especially for R, resources, availability, and cost of, instead of the, the chocolate box, let's go back to the pizzeria and just think how much it must cost for a pizza, for a pizzeria to do business on a monthly basis and just to break even and the amount of slices it must sell just to break even. Think about all of the input costs that potentially go into running a business, from workers, to rent, to utilities, to resources, to, uh, to insurance. So there's a lot of different, and those are just five off the top of my head. There's just uh, there's dozens of input costs, you know, small little different input costs, uh, as state taxes, local taxes, where you keep going. Uh, it costs a lot of money to run a business day to day. So let's say something negative happens. And let's say something negative happens. So with resources, the cost of, uh, one of the big um, political pushes is a higher minimum wage. In the household market, that sounds fantastic. right? A higher minimum wage is a higher disposable income for uh, for consumers. And going back to the circular flow model, this is really, I'm not coming down on either side of it, just dealing with the political and economic reality of choices. Where does the flow of the dollar start? And if you believe that the flow of the dollar starts in the product market, you would probably be more for minimum wage because that is increasing the disposable income of people, of households in the product market. To, to then purchase products. If you believe, though, that the flow of the dollar starts in the factor market, well, a higher minimum wage is something you would probably not agree with because that is raising input costs. That's decreasing a business's ability and willingness to supply. Again, not coming down on either side of it, but here at Cobernomics, we deal with the political and economic reality. And when in doubt, we graph it out. So let's take a look at, there's, let's say, increase in minimum wage. Big example, big current events example. Uh, but let's take a look at it. So a decrease, this would decrease the ability and willingness of businesses to produce. All of a sudden, the labor resource just increased in price. So this would be, and this is very important for law of supply, be careful uh, when supply shifts, it looks like it's an optical illusion. Remember when graphs shift, they either shift left or they shift right. They don't shift up or down. 
Left is decrease, right is increase. So here, at the same price, let's say a slice of pizza did not change. A slice of pizza is still $2.50. At $2.50 at the regular wage, businesses were willing to produce here at Q. However, an increase in the minimum wage is making it harder for businesses to break even. Those are now more input costs they have to cover to break even, and so they are going to decrease the supply. And so, so we see supply here, it is not it is not increasing. It might look like, it's like I said, it's an optical illusion. It might look like the supply curve is going up because S1 is kind of looks like it's above S, but it's not. The supply curve is shifting to it's shifting to the left. So we see here two dollars and fifty cents. And if you're ever confused, again, when in doubt, graph it out. Just look at what's happening on the x-axis to quantity. We see that quantity is decreasing. So see, we see a decrease in the ability and willingness because of the higher wages. It is now harder for businesses to profit which is forcing them to decrease supply. Maybe that's because they're laying off workers. Um, and so they are decreasing supply. And so it goes from Q to Q1. Uh, now let's say, let's say that government taxes go down as an inverse, or the cost of dough goes down, a uh, resource. So either one. And either one would now make it easier for businesses to break even, and now with less input costs, perhaps a business could hire another worker or could invest that money saved in better technology. So less input costs uh, by, let's say, uh, less taxes or um, cheaper dough that now a pizzeria's ability and willingness to produce has increased, so we see a shift to the right. And again, watch out for that optical illusion in, on the supply curve, that S1 looks like it's below S. So you might say, oh look, supply is decreasing. No, supply is increasing. It goes at our $2.50. Originally, we were at Q, but now, due to the decrease in input costs, at the same $2.50, we are now at Q1, Q1 being greater than, than Q. And that is, and that would be a shift to the right. And that is the law of supply. Thank you for watching the law of supply. In our next lesson, we are going to combine the law of supply and the law of demand and combine all of the laws together to take a look at market price and market equilibrium. Until then, please, following this video, watch our financial uh, fitness video. And because remember, at Cobranomics, whether you are investing in your money, in your mind, or in your body, invest often, invest hard, and no feelings. We'll see you next time. Remember, money never sleeps.